Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to give you three things you can copy from the Djokovic backhand to help improve your backhand. Now, first, this video is courtesy of 12KGP Tennis on YouTube. I have put their link in the description below. Make sure you follow them. Incredible pro content. So, the first thing is what's called on edge. So, it's this position right here. You'll see that Djokovic has taken his racket back. And at this point, a couple things are happening. The tip of the racket is the height of his head. His strings are facing directly to his left. That's called point your strings to the crowd. And it's important not just that you do this, but it's also important when you do this. See, Djokovic uses the time, and this is actually Marin Cilic he's hitting with. He's actually using the time that the ball's traveling in the air prior to the bounce to get the racket back. Watch that when the ball bounces, that's when Djokovic's racket is all the way back. This is called on edge, by the way, because if you're directly in front of Djokovic or you're directly behind him, all you'll see is the edge of the racket. You won't see the strings. My goal with so many of these videos, really all of my videos, is that you know what to look for when you go out and film yourself. Please film yourself from the back and look for these ideas and look for this position. It's called on edge, tip of the racket at the same height as the top of your head, the strings facing directly off to the side by the time the ball bounces in almost all situations. The next position is called the drop. Now, this position right here has his strings pointing down. This is vital to consistency. I mean, this is absolutely needed if you want to be a consistent player on your backhand side. Once the racket gets on edge, now you can start to drop the racket in the back and get gravity-assisted racket speed. You want the tip pointing up at this point. You can see that. The tip of his racket's pointing up. Same height as, as his head, as I mentioned. That allows for the racket to then drop down in the back and gain acceleration. It's kind of like riding your bike downhill or driving a car downhill. You can go faster driving downhill than you can uphill. And same thing on your bike because you have gravity-assisted speed. And that's the same thing we want on the backhand. But it's not just important that we drop the racket but it's important that we tilt the strings down. And you'll even notice, he's yes, he's changed his grip, but he's allowing his right wrist to be loose and relax and actually curls a little bit. And one of the, reason, one of the reasons that's happening is look at his hips. Look out how when the racket is dropping, right around here during the drop, his hips start turning. So watch his racket as it drops. Now, right here, his hips start turning. And that's actually something that will buckle the wrist naturally if you're loose and relaxed. But that is going to help him to point the strings down. You might actually have to feel like you're manually turning this wrist in order to get the strings to close. But st closing the racket is what's going to get the strings then to face forward at contact without any manipulation while going up to the ball. A closed racket here gets your strings to face forward at contact. So if you're someone who struggles with consistency, go out and film yourself. I would say the vast majority, maybe even 90% of tennis players have the racket on edge at this point, meaning you could balance a coin right on, on the top of the frame. That points the strings directly to the side, which means when you get to the ball, the racket will be open, meaning it'll send the ball way out. Which, what do people do then? They roll the racket. Almost, they, they almost feel like they're rolling over the ball at this point. They'll say, oh, I need to roll over the ball to get the ball in. You don't. The reason people roll over the ball on their backhand or try to make that move is because their strings are on edge. Tilt your strings down. And you could think, you know, anywhere from 30 to 45 degrees. Anywhere in, there, in that range, then your strings will face forward without any manipulation. And it's so much easier to be consistent. And then last is a high finish. Now, he does something really interesting. You can see he turned his hips, but look, one, at how high his racket goes. So the tip of the racket is way above his head level. I mean, go out and film yourself. See how high the tip of your racket goes compared to the top of your head because tennis is a lifting game. So we got to swing up as we're hitting the ball. But I also want you to notice one position in particular. 
This is what is called the left side of the letter V. His racket, if I draw a letter V, his racket is positioned on the left side of that V. In fact, at this point right here, we can't even see his racket. It's hidden by the yellow line on the left. This is really important for gaining accuracy with your shot. This angle between his arm and his racket, his left arm and his racket, and really the angle is going to be at the point of the hand, that angle is the same from contact, and really this angle here, the angle from his left arm to his racket, and all the way through stays intact. So these two angles are the same. That means there's no wrist in his backhand at all. And you can say, well, he must be hitting down the line. You know, no, he's ripping this ball cross court. In fact, it pulls Marin Cilic off the court. His left foot is actually slightly outside the doubles line. You can do this even on a cross court ball. You can do this anytime. That once you set the wrist angle, and this is the classic point the butt cap at the ball position. Once you have this wrist angle in the left wrist, that wrist angle can stay intact all the way up and through. And man, does this make you accurate. One of the reasons why Djokovic's backhand is so accurate because he, I would say 70% of the time, keeps the racket to the left of his hands. Again, this is called the left side of the letter V. And it stays like that, and then he goes over his shoulder. At no time does the racket go to the right of his hand. I would say about 30% of the time, his racket gets straight up and down. But at best, it stays to the left of his hand. So I want you to go out and film yourself. Look for these ideas. Look that you get your racket all the way back on edge by the time the ball bounces. That, you're, that the tip of the racket is pointing up. That the top of the racket is the same height as the top of your head with your strings pointing off to the side as we as I mentioned before it's point your strings to the crowd then let your racket begin to drop down in the back let your racket drop down but as it's dropping make sure you're turning your body toward the net that will start smoothly bringing the racket to contact but notice at this point his right wrist is curled over look for this in your own backhand, that the right wrist, if you're right-handed, that the bottom hand wrist has the uh, is allowing the strings to face down at this point. You've got to close your racket face on both the forehand and backhand to be the most consistent player you can be. Strings then facing forward, and then this position right here. Jeez, I love this. And I teach this to my students all the time. In fact, I actually have them sometimes stop here and not even go over the shoulder just to make sure that they're getting here. So I have them drop, close the racket face, and then swing through and up, and then they actually stop right there. It's a really great way to finish on a return of serve, by the way. It's just to finish out in front, almost like you feel like you're handing your racket to your opponent in the left side of the letter V. You can kind of, you'll almost feel like Jimmy Connors when you finish this way out in front and high. And then you can allow the racket, obviously, to go over your shoulder, and he actually taps his back right there. But realize how high he went with the racket staying to the left of his hand to get there. So if you go out and you film yourself and you look for these three ideas, there is no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.